we were attempting to open an office in China at the time. And uh, I can remember very plainly, I, I went over to Beijing and uh, we, t we were able to have the office open. We were able to take the typewriters with us, which sounds kind of equating now. But uh, China at the time wouldn't let us bring any typewriter ribbon in. So you had the typewriters, but couldn't use them. One morning I went up there, I parked my car in planter and I took an early flight and I went to DC yeah, to testify on the farm bill. And uh, I looked up, the chairman of the subcommittee was there and one other guy, and that's it. And I left my corn planter sit for a day so I could come up here and <laughs> tell these guys what I thought they ought to be doing. <laughs> the way I looked at it, it was always like, you know, when I left the house in the morning and got in my tractor combine, I had, a, I had a, about a 95% idea of what I was going to accomplish that day. When I went to Washington, D.C., I had about a 5% uh, idea of what I was going to accomplish that day. One issue that, that would be unique for me was I was serving as President 2000 when we had to address the Millennium Bug. People don't think about that these days because it didn't happen, but we had to be ready for that. And, and of course, since it didn't happen, we don't know whether we were ready or not, but uh, we thought we were. The Malaysians, then started going after soybeans because they would do research saying our soybean oil being hydrogenated and so on was, was unhealthy too. And we had a, a program that the farmers loved to call tropical fats. So what we were in essence doing was destroying both markets. One Friday afternoon about five o'clock I get on the airplane and fly to Hawaii. And I got to Hawaii on Saturday morning about two o'clock. In the meantime the Malaysians have flown into Hawaii, and eight o'clock that morning, Saturday morning, we started meeting. And we met till about five o'clock that afternoon and finally worked out an agreement where we'd all back off and keep our mouth shut and not try to hurt each other. And uh, we never put it in writing, we shook hands on it. By 5.30 or so, I was back on the airplane. What in the world is a farm boy from Southwest Ohio that has spent a lot more time with a scoop shovel in his hand than an ink pen, you know, on, on projects, sitting and doing with a member of parliament. So I was kind of taken by it. And I asked him, I said, so as a member of parliament, what, what would you say is the most important thing that, that you've done? He said, boy, and it was that British accent. Boy, he says, I can tell you the first thing that was most important and the second thing that was most important. I said, really? Because, yes. First thing was getting elected. Second thing was getting reelected. If you're not in, you can't lead. So, you know, that, that takes all of the fluff away from everything we get back to work. I was with the uh, uh, ambassador in, in Argentina, and I, he was there, and I was over the side, and he said, I don't want you there. The people want to hear from you. So he put me at the head of the table, and he sat off to the side. Uh, you know, it, things like that just really wake you up and, and make you realize how important the U.S. farmer is because they know that you don't have an agenda, you're not working uh, for, you know, as an aide to a congressman or whatever. They know that you are there to tell them your story and, your, and what you say, uh, our integrity is, is second to none. Uh, U.S. farmers, uh, uh, when people listen to us, they believe you because they, they know it's coming from your heart.